they got up from the bench and walked back to the wide square paved with sets. From there they passed under the arch in the wall and found themselves in front of St. Nicholas Church. There was a large cross and two stone tablets by the church. On one of the tablets there was the image of Jesus crushing the head of the snake and on the other one a Christian creed written with gilded Georgian letters. Zacharias stopped, turned to Emin and read the next stanza. Her chishi her sheichi sevdi onu behter istedi. Chimi tehti, chimi taji, chimi efser istedi. Padshahlar dem badem tehsiri kishver istedi. Eshke hem çok kimse düştü vesli dilber istedi. Hiç birinde agibet, bir zövgü rahat görmedim. Your nation and my nation both have suffered from occupant states. But I don't want to talk about politics. We'd better look at ourselves. There are people among us who invade another's land take possession of their property by means of bribery, lies and blackmail. I wish all people treated each other with respect and loved their neighbors as they love themselves. If everyone fought against their ego, there would be no wars in the world. Sure, the New Testament says, what is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source your lusts? that wage war in your flesh, you desire something, you're envious and you cannot obtain what you want, so you fight and kill. We should subdue the beast inside of us. I'll tell you something, Amin. In the past I lived in Azerbaijan for some time. And now you have come to visit Tbilisi. I got to know your culture that was foreign to me and now you are getting to know our culture. You are a Muslim. This cross and this picture may seem foreign to you. And you are unable to read and understand this creed written with Georgian letters. This alphabet and these words are native to me, but foreign to you. And yet we treat each other with respect. Yes, Mr. Zaharia. It is also written in the Quran, O oh, mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female, and made you peoples and tribes, that you may know one another. True Muslims always try to get to know others, to learn about other nations' cultures. But those who are guided by their egos do not want to comprehend that which is foreign to them. Instead, they want to destroy it or to submit it to themselves, exalting one's own nation and humiliating the other's nation is an occupant mentality. You are right, I mean. Indeed, the occupant nations have more people of this kind, guided by their egos. But there are such people in every nation, including our nations as well. That's why I say I wish everyone knew how to respect their neighbors and to understand them. Now let's move to the next stanza. Men özüm çox kuzekarı kim yager eyledim. Sikkelendirdim gübari tireni zer eyledim. Qara qaşı döndərib yaguti əhmər eyledim. Dane-i xer möhreni dürrə bərabər eylədim. Qədr-ü qiymət istəyib, qeyrəz xəsarət görmədim. Sir, in my opinion, these words show that earthly sciences may be useful for a while, but in the long run they will cause great losses and will make the person lose their value. 
It may also mean that society doesn't value the person. It just uses people, benefits from them. One thing is clear. The world wants to use you, to benefit from you, and then throw you in the garbage. The world does not know a person's value. The value of a creature is known by its creator. In Islamic tradition there is a beautiful hadith. God explains Prophet David why he created the world. He says, I was a hidden treasure and wanted to be known. Therefore I created the creatures. I know this hadith from another Azerbaijani poet, Nasimi. I remember his beautiful poem, Man Genjinihani Kuntekanzem, Man Genjinihan Nihan Manam Man. Humans are the most honored creatures. The thought of using human beings is horrible, because man is the most valuable being after God. Compared to man's high value, both science and art and pearls are worth nothing. There were a few graves and a bench by St. Nicholas Church. The new friends sat on the bench and Zaharia continued reading the Muhammad. Eyliyen virane jemshidi jemin eyvanene Yola salmış bil ki bezmi işretin çendanene Kim galıptır ki onun gem tökmeyiptir ganene Döne döne imtihan ettim felek dövranene Onda men ber ekslikten özge adet görmedim Jemshid is the founder of Nevruz festival, sir. We love Nevruz festival so much. I got to love this festival as well. I would always celebrate it with my friends when I lived in Baku. I am so grateful to Jamshid for that. But the ruthless fate destroyed his palace as well. I received much love from my father in my childhood. He died when I was still a small boy. He has stayed in my memory like the sun shining on my childhood. He was one of the rare people who treat everyone with love. He didn't even realize how much he affected me. By his side I felt as though I were in heaven. Despite that I could not be fully happy. The reason of it was death. When I was four or five years old, I began asking questions about life, especially about my eternal destiny. Both my parents were atheists. I do not blame them, but I blame the Soviet propaganda. My parents were honest people with a good conscience. When answering my questions, they would say the things they thought were true. You will live for 70, 80 or a hundred years at the most, and then you will die. They would tell me I would not exist after death, I would disappear, and I believed them. Really? Oh yes, I mean, I was a child and I believed them. I could not even imagine that they could be wrong. The idea of eternal non-existence took root in my mind as the most certain truth. I often cried and wanted to find a solution to the problem of eternal non-existence. To not exist seemed overwhelmingly horrible to me. Thousands, millions, billions of years will pass and life will go on, but I will see nothing. I will know nothing. I will not be living, I will not be existing. That's terrible, sir, it makes one's heart burst. It was bursting, indeed, my heart was broken badly. Once I asked my father, Daddy, hasn't anyone found a remedy for death until now? My father said, No, darling, no one has. 
Though I believed my father, I hated to accept such condition. I was searching for a hope. I said, Daddy, people know everything in the world. They find remedies for all illnesses. How come no one has come up with a remedy for death? I imagined how nice it would be to drink a pill and never die. I remember my father smiled and answered to me, Don't worry, darling. In the near future, they will most certainly invent a remedy for death as well. Maybe you will grow up to be a scientist and one day you will invent the remedy for death. The moment I heard these words, I felt as if dark clouds in my heart were scattered and a ray of hope shone at a distance. My father didn't tell me fairy tales. He really believed in what he said. That discussion with my dad became a turning point in my life. In what sense? A hope for eternal life appeared in my heart. In the course of my life I came to understand there is no need for a remedy for death because death is the door leading to another life. You know, the Quran says every soul will taste death and you will only be given your full compensation on the day of resurrection. Indeed, everyone will pass through the door of death and after the last day, that is after the resurrection of the dead, the human spirits will be wrapped in body again and that will be the real remedy for death. Living in this corrupt world full of perversion for thousands, millions, billions of years is like an eternal hell. Sir, the verse which I just shared with you ends with these words and what is the life of this world except the enjoyment of delusion? I was a child at that time and I didn't understand it. I saw the beautiful side of the world but I didn't see its ugly side. I got to know it as I lived and grew up. Now I believe in God's love, grace and goodness. I am not afraid of death. On the contrary, I want to return to the Creator's embrace by means of death. After a while, Zakharia read the ninth stanza of the Muhammad. Gün kimi bir şəxsə gündə xeyr versən səd həzar, Zərrəcə etməz edayı şükri neymət aşikar. Qalmayıbdır, qeyrəti şərmü həya, namusu ar. Dedilər ki, eytibarü eytiqad aləmdə var. Ondan ötürü mən də çox gəzdim, nəhayət görmədim. I agree. Neither have I seen trust and faith in this world. I only saw people wanting to use me. I cannot trust anyone. They don't even say thanks for the good things. Sir, you've lived a long life. Tell me the truth. Have you seen trust and faith at all in your life? Yes, I have, but not in this world. Let me explain. I haven't seen any trust and faith in the world because there are none. There are only lies and interest here. But in God's kingdom there is joy, peace, love, goodness, faithfulness, faith and purity. If the kingdom of heaven is in my heart and I fellowship with one or more others who have the kingdom in their hearts, then we are not in this world but in God's kingdom. And there you can find trust and faith, but in the world you cannot find them. <laughs>